If you want a really good basic watercolor set to just start out with a beginner set, I've got the set for you. This is from Yasutomo. It's their Ninji watercolor set. It's a step above their Aquarel set. I also have that one that's about $10. This one's about $20. But let me tell you, the colors are super pigmented and it's a really good color palette and you will really love this one. I'm gonna show you the swatches today. I'm gonna to show you blending and we're gonna do a little Valentine's Day project today. I'm ready for Valentine's Day or at least a little bit warmer weather. We got snowbound up here last week. We got like four feet. It's kind of melted since then, but let me know, did it snow where you're at? This set comes in 12 colors. I saw this at Creativation where they were demonstrating it and the artist that used it did this beautiful artwork. And I was like, I wanna do that too, but. I'm not gonna do the flowers today, but maybe another day I'll do them. <laughs> we have the Artist Watercolors right here that we're gonna try out today. I got these from Yasutomo and all the other items in the video. Thank you so much for sending them to me. They have really cool products. Let's see. So this is, this is a little tray that you can work in you can work your colors in. There are 12 colors in here that we're gonna try out. We're also going to use this paper. This is a watercolor pad. This one is cold pressed and this one is hot pressed. And then we're gonna do some fun things with the fine liners that they have. They have some pigment fine liners. These are waterproof and because they are pigment, I believe that they are good light fast but it doesn't specify that i'm not sure but i i'm pretty sure that's what pigment means and then we have some brushes right here that we're going to try out these are the fusion brushes from yasutomo so first off we're going to take all of the little things out okay so we'll do it this way because it's a little bit easier i believe Maybe, maybe not. Okay. So we'll take all of these off. They are so cute. That is like the cutest ever, don't you think? Okay. I also have some other watercolor. I'm just sad that I have to ruin it. Oh, but it comes off like that. And then there they come in this little pan. And then you can put it back in. Isn't that cute? So they're removable from here. The color names are on here. So what we probably should do is keep these so we know what colors they are and write them down so we can write the names with the fine lines. So I'm going to take all of these off real fast for you guys. Then we have another Yasutuma product. This is their uh, water brush so we don't have to refill everything. I just realized I did not put these in order. So some of them will be easy. Some of the browns will be harder. Uh, we'll figure it out. I should put them in order as I take it, put them off. Here are the swatches for the Yasutomo watercolor set. They were really pretty and pigmented. Like I said, the color names are on the wrappers. You want to make sure you do the swatch chart or you can look at mine and have the names as reference. So that way you'll know which pan it is. You could mess the pans around a little bit, but you'll want to know which pan it is so you can know which color to pick out. We are going to try the hot press for this. So you can tape it down or you can just use it as is. We're just gonna take it off. Okay, we're gonna put this back in here. This also has little spots too that you can work with. To start this out with, you just squeeze the water brush. You have to put water in it first though. 
Let's see. Is that one have water in it? Yeah, this one has water in it. We'll use this one. Okay. It's just a little bit smaller. Okay, so we got our water going. And then we come over here to our watercolor. Now we're seeing the color right here on the brush. And then we can come over here and swatch it. Quite a bit of pigment on there. We get a nice little gradient here. And hot press, I believe, is the one that dries the fastest. So we'll leave a little spot for the name. We don't know it right now at this point. Oh my gosh, look at I'm trying to get this off. There's so much in here. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, I, f I have a feeling this one's gonna be, look at that. Very, very pretty. There was definitely a lot of water on that one. All right, I'm gonna go to this one. Next. Okay, the next color. Ooh, this one's a pretty red. This one's pinker. All right, the next one. Purple hue. Ooh, I love these colors so far. They're very pretty. Okay, the next one. I feel like we should go to the blue. Maybe. I don't know. And we'll do it over here. I feel like I never have enough water on the brush and then I come over here and it's like super watery. So that's good. Next one is another blue. Ooh, this one's dark. That one's pretty. Next one 
think it's going to be a green. Yeah. Very, very pretty. Our next one is like an olive green. Look how it's drying. I love watercolors drying. Okay, the next one see what this color is Ooh, a very dark green okay and then our last one even darker green oh this is actually a black that looks like black to me now we will see if we can match them up with our little things over here okay this first one is definitely this color the next one is this color they match pretty well. The next one would be this color. The next one is a red. I think we have a red. So I believe this one, this one was super light, but yeah. And then that one, and then I believe this one. So you can see, I probably had a little bit more water on some of these. And then we go over here. So I, this is proving to be easier than I thought matching these colors up yep because they match so well okay all right the next one whoa let's see is yeah this indigo i believe okay and then the next one oh unless i'm missing one oh i am missing one not indigo this one's indigo right here this one is more of a purpley. Let's see. Okay, I believe this one's this one. I'll double check. Vela blue. This one's a little bit more purpley. Okay. And then green, this one. And then this green. And then a black Payne's gray so we're gonna go through we got all of the names I'm gonna put them out so we can see them a little bit easier and then we will write the names down so we always have the names and they actually match really well which is awesome because that's not always the case Unfolding those gave them enough time to dry over here. <laughs> We're going to pick uh, probably this one. So this is their Detail Master Pigment Liner. Okay. So this one is 218 Gamboge Hue. Let's see. 218. Out. Okay, this one is 687 Burnt Umber. All 
All right, the next one is 684 Burnt Sienna. Okay, the next one is 303. Oh my gosh. Alzarin Crimson Hue. I don't know. I've never heard of the Alzarin before. 303. It's, it's hard to read. Al. Azarin. The A N or I N? Crimson Hue. That was a long name. Okay. The next one is 602 Permanent Rose. Okay, the last one on this row is Purple Lake 439. Looking very cute. This next one is 443 Ultramarine Outreamer. Yeah, Outreamer. It says Permits A Pigment Index. Interesting. I don't know what that means. Does it say it on the back? Hmm. I don't know. Okay, so let's do 443 Ultra Marine O U T R E M E R. Okay. This one is 450 Fail Blue. Hopefully I'm spelling that right. P H T. I think there's another H. So the print is so small. Okay, Viridian Hue 560. Okay, now we have 568 Sage Green. Okay, 422 Indigo. Okay, the last one, 797 Payne's Gray. This is the part in the video where I did it twice. And why did I do it twice? Because I wanna give the best video to you guys and I want to show that sometimes we mess up the first time. I think everyone can be creative and can be an artist but it takes practice. We have to keep practicing. So the first time I did this heart Valentine's Day project I thought the watercolor turned out really well and I was really happy about that and I saw this on Instagram and I was like I want to try that. When I went and made the outline of the hearts with the fine liner I didn't love what I did. I feel like I made them a little too loose and they weren't like the exact shape. If I'd made it maybe more the same shape and like still a little offset, I think that would have looked good, but I feel like it just kind of didn't look great. So I did it again and I liked the second time a lot more. And here's the second time that I did it. All right, I'm gonna try these hearts again. I like didn't love how they turned out the first time.
Okay, so we got a lot of cute hearts in there. Okay, we're gonna draw this better. Not perfect, but. I think that looks cuter. It's a little bit more the shape of the heart. So I'm putting these on here. I have been forgetting to hit the film button. So I put them on here. I'm just making a little bit nicer than it was last time. So they actually look a little bit nicer on here. Just at least following the shape. It doesn't have to be perfect, but at least following somewhat. There we go. I like that better. Okay, and then we'll do that one. Maybe we'll just do it. There we go. Looks fine to me. Okay, we are just gonna write a few, on a few of them. I did like the idea of writing. I don't know, maybe I will write on all of them now that the hearts look a little bit nicer. <laughs> Um, the call me one is funny. All right. All right. Um, it's another one. True love. And we can write heart. Oh, I like this one. I heart you. And then, oh, I like the love bug one. Okay, what should I put in the one in the middle? Let's see, how dry is it? Still pretty wet. Uh, maybe I'll write love on that one. Yeah, it's still really wet. So I'm gonna have to come back and put that one on there just cause it was wet. I put in little names so they'd be like conversation hearts and I thought that was really cute. It was, I haven't seen that online, maybe it is, but I was like, oh, that would be fun. And that's part of just being creative is putting your own spin on every, something else that you've seen. This I had to do twice also. The first time I did it, I did it as circles and some of them were a little too saturated and so you couldn't really see the color combination that came out. So I tried it again and this time I did it as squares and I think it turned out a lot better. I would definitely recommend using cyan and magenta to make like purple and orange because magenta does a lot better than red in making purple. You'll just see it as we go through. You can also use the packaging that these come in. There's little pans that you can mix colors in and I did that here and I made the purple and I tried with the red and the blue and that way you can mix it up a little bit better because if you mix it up on the paper sometimes it doesn't mix up as well but if you mix it up off-site then it'll turn out maybe a little bit better color combinations are great to use especially when you have a limited color palette like these 12 colors that way you can make more colors you're like i really want a till i really want you know a different purple but i feel like this palette has a lot of those colors but you can make a lot more colors if you combine the colors and if you do it right. And then you can have so many colors. I could have added black to a lot of these and made them like a deeper color. And that would look really good if you were trying to get some kind of contrast in there, like doing, you know, a lighter color and then adding the black to the color and using it in the forefront to kind of create some depth in your paintings. You can do that too. So here are all the colored combinations as squares. 
what we're going to do this time, we're just going to do the three main colors, red, blue, and um, yeah. So we have our red. Oh boy, I put way so much water in there. Okay. Color is so tricky. Okay. Okay. So for this one, where we combine it with something else, we're just going to do half. And then we'll see what this looks like. Okay. I hope it hasn't already dried. Okay, I think we're getting something. This is a little better than it was before. Okay, so now we're getting more of the yellow. Okay. Still looks orangey. Maybe I didn't get it completely out. Okay. Um, this is just the yellow by itself, right? Okay. And then we've got yellow here that we're going to mix with something else. We'll just put that much on. Okay. We're going to mix it with the green. Right? This is not the right green, or is it? One, two, three. Actually, I do like that green. Let's try this green. Oh, we weren't supposed to do green, though. Oh, well. Oh no, I totally missed the red on that one. Okay. Okay. interesting right okay the next one the yellow plus the green to make this yellow green Okay, and the next one is just green by itself. Okay, perfect. I'm liking this one better even though I messed that one up. Okay, um, now we go to the blue, right? Which one's the blue? I think this one's the blue. Okay, now we're going to be super careful with this one to not oversaturate it so we can actually see the color. Okay. Hmm. 
Hmm. It's purpley. Okay. Um, I just kind of really want to compare the, the magenta now. With it. I, yeah, so we're going to put magenta here. So magenta with blue is going to be over here, right? Okay, that wasn't a ton. That was a bit. Okay, I blotted some of it out. Huh. So then... I'll just put a little bit here. See if it goes any lighter. Oh no, that was not one. Okay. Okay. There we go. That feels too. Let's see. There we go. We're getting our purple now. That's what I wanted. Okay, so now I have the rest of the chart to fill in. Okay, blue plus yellow. Oh, that's gonna be so strong. Blue plus yellow. I'm gonna take some of it out. Okay. It's interesting to see how the uh, like the number of okay we need to get our yellow on here yeah there we go we got some green there see how the percentages go down see look then you can get a much darker green right here than that one but it looks similar to the i totally wasn't recording that I'll tell you what I went through. I went through all of the magentas. I thought I was recording, I'm sorry. And then I went through all this. So you'll notice that magenta produces a little bit better of colors than the red does. They just look like the purple looks a little bit better. The orange looks a little bit more orange. And the, um, then this is actually, I don't know why it came out red. I might've accidentally put red on this one as opposed to magenta. We'll see, huh? If I did red plus red, but anyway, um, the ones that matter are right here and right here. So this was the purple, but I didn't have as much magenta on it. So that's why. So really when you do mix colors, you have to make sure that you get the ratio, right? Cause you can see some of these ratios are darker and some of them are lighter, but that's what you can get with these. Okay. So let me know which one you like better. Do you like the kind of the sloppy or the one that's like a little less sloppy? Let me know. Uh, in the comments below, which one is your favorite? I kind of like this one a little bit better, but yeah, that's just me. And then out of these ones, because I did, we did both of this, which one do you like better? Do you like this one better here or this one? I feel like this one is a little bit more complete. It's still not perfect. And I feel like that's kind of the great thing about practicing with all this stuff is that you kind of learn as you go. And you're like, oh, I like this a little bit better. I like the squares. I like how they turned out as opposed to these circles. It just looks a little bit more polished. So let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Now I get to clean up this mess and I don't usually show this. Maybe I should start showing it. This is what my desk usually looks like in the middle of editing a video because I'm like, I don't want to put anything away. But then I'm like, at the end of the video, once the video is released, I put everything away. Hopefully so it'll look good the next time I come to my desk.